Have you done your research? What have you found? Rimadyl is deadly. Painkillers will definitely make your dog sick. A quick Look Online is full of horror stories. But surely your vet wouldn't give your dog something so dangerous? Of course not. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Avery from ourpetshealth.com, helping you and your dog to live healthier, happier lives. It makes me so frustrated and sad for their dog when I hear of people who are too scared of the side effects they've heard about on the internet to even consider using a drug class that is proven to offer the best chance of a pain-free recovery from surgery or the opportunity of an excellent quality of life free from the debilitating influence of chronic pain. The most common painkillers used by vets is a class of drug known as the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, otherwise known as NSAIDs or non-steroidals for short. Now there are many different drugs in this class that are sold under many different names. Today in this video I want to address safety. Check out my other video if you want a complete overview of these drugs. For now though, will they kill your dog? Well the short answer is clearly no. The slightly longer answer is that all drugs or at least those which actually do anything have side effects or the potential for side effects. Now somewhere between 3 and 9% of dogs are reported to experience side effects when taking NSAIDs. In the vast majority, this is limited to vomiting or diarrhea, which is only mild and which goes away when the drug is stopped. A really tiny proportion will experience liver or kidney issues, and yes, a few of these even smaller proportion will prove fatal. To put this into perspective, the majority of patients prescribe these drugs for long-term use at elderly. Now this means that the chance of a few of them suffering from an underlying liver or kidney condition, or having undetected cancer or some other illness is pretty high, it may be that some of these patients were going to die regardless of treatment started, with others, yes, yeah, sadly being pushed over the edge by their drug treatment. Now this is obviously tragic for the individuals involved, but it is so important that any horror stories are given perspective. To give a human example, did you know that there are estimated to be about 16,500 deaths a year in the US due to aspirin, with a further 100,000 people needing hospitalisation? In the UK, the death toll estimated is around 3,000. Is this fat going to stop you taking aspirin when you need it? The flip side is that non-steroidal anti-inflammatories offer our dogs the very best chance of a pain-free life. Be that recovery from surgery, getting over a ligament or muscular injury, or living with arthritis long term. In denying your dog the option of these drugs, when they are felt by your vet to be appropriate, it is very likely that your dog will be suffering from pain unnecessarily. Yes, there are alternative painkillers, but none of them are proven to work quite as well in dogs. Pain has many detrimental effects. It has a massive impact on a dog's quality of life and it really should not be ignored. Now, of course, we don't want to use any drug irresponsibly and there are a number of actions we can take to reduce the risk of side effects. And the first of these is to run some blood tests. In older patients or any patient that is likely to be taking the drug on a long-term basis, a pre-treatment blood sample should be taken follow-up monitoring bloods run as advised by your vet. This will help pick up those individuals where there are concerns regarding liver or kidney function. If this is the case then it may be that an alternative treatment plan is made or that your pet is monitored more closely to be sure they don't deteriorate. Now at number two is to stop if vomiting or diarrhea develops. Any dog that experiences vomiting or diarrhea should not continue to take the drug or risk the development of stomach ulcers. A few days off treatment will most likely result in recovery although your vet may want to give them something to, to aid in this recovery. It may be that your dog will then be fine if they start the drug again. After all, vomiting and diarrhea is very common in otherwise healthy dogs who are not on any other treatment. Another option is to switch to a different non-steroidal. It has been shown that um, it's very unlikely for a patient to react to two different drugs, even though they're in the same class. For those seriously affected or known to have a very sensitive stomach, then it may be that alternative treatments are then explored. Okay, next up is to stop if your pet appears depressed, becomes unwell or stops eating or drinking. If your dog is unwell for any other reason, if they stop eating or drinking, then do not continue to give non-steroidals. The reason for this is that if a dog becomes dehydrated, their organs may be under more strain and anti-inflammatory is then more likely to cause damage, especially to their kidneys. Okay, running quickly through the rest of our actions is to not give a higher dose than your vet has prescribed at number four. And at number five, do not give any non-steroidals at the same time as steroids or any other non-steroidal. Next, we have the fact that you should not give human painkillers unless specifically advised by your vet. And then at number seven is you should always contact your vet promptly if you have any concerns. 
Number eight is to use other management and treatment strategies for arthritis and other chronic pain conditions. And this will allow us to reduce the dose of non-steroidals needed to keep your pet pain-free. Finally, for any pet who is on painkillers following surgery or an injury, make sure you follow your vet's instructions fully to minimize pain and inflammation and allow a shorter course or a lower dose of medication to be used. If we follow these recommendations, we can make sure that our dogs are really unlikely to experience any significant side effects, while at the same time, they will be as pain-free as possible. Don't be the owner who condemns their pet to suffer in silence when there is another way. Be sensible, yes. Don't use any drugs inappropriately, of course, but at the same time, don't ignore pain. You owe that to your dog. Now, I expect anyone whose dog may have had side effects to comment. And no, this video has not been sponsored by anyone. Please though, let me know how painkillers have helped your dog to live a healthier, happier life and how their quality of life has been improved and what you've noticed that improvement to be. I would really love to hear from you. Also, if it's your first time here, consider subscribing to make sure that you don't miss out on any future content and allow me to continue to help you and your pet to live a healthier, happier life. So until next time, I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health, because they're family.